Very good. The Eighth Commandment said we're not to steal. Don't take anything that doesn't belong to you, regardless of its value, big or small. Have you ever done that? Yeah. You yeah, have? Yeah. And what do they call people who do that? A thief. Thief. Very good. Third Commandment says we're not to commit blasphemy. If you take a holy God's name, you use like a four-letter filter in this thing. Right. Just taking his name, you just drag it through the mud. You ever done that one? All the time. See this all the time. You gotta be careful and watch. In the Bible, it's very clear, it says God is gonna hold that person guilty who right. takes his name in vain. Just that one sin, you're gonna be guilty. Think about it, why? It's his name. Come on, his name. You guys love you guys like your mom? Love my mom. You love your mom. Watch this. What if I used your mother's name as a swear word every time I was near you? How would you like that? I wouldn't enjoy it. You wouldn't like it. See, you know, so then why do you do it to God? He didn't do anything to you. The reason you're here is because of him. That's why we're born. My mom you got, tells me not to. You should be? My mom tells me not to. So your mom tells you not to, so you're going to be what? Rebellious and do it? But she tells you not to. I'm actually coming from a very Catholic family. Well, it doesn't matter what family you come from, and then you're still swearing. That's worse. Okay, like Come on, yeah, that's our point. Well, I hope you stop doing that. That's the whole point. It's God. Right. He didn't do anything to you to deserve yeah. you to use his name as a swear word. Yeah. Use Saddam Hussein or Adolf Hitler. Those were the bad guys. <laughs> my dad, there you go, yeah. All right. One more and we're done. The seventh commandment says you're not to commit adultery. But before you answer Jesus, then you just look at another person and you lust after them sexually. You've already committed adultery with them in your heart. You ever look at another person and lust? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, you see, there you go. Here's the problem. So, what, what, what's your first name? Paige. Paige? Oh, you. Jane. I'm Tom. Hi. Sorry to admit this, but in your own admission, you're a bunch of lying thieves, you're a blasphemers, and you're adulterers at heart. It doesn't sound like a good person, does it? No. So, if some drunk jumps the curb and he kills us right now, and you're facing a holy God, how do you think he would find you based on those commandments? We've only done four, and there's six more to go. Do you think you'd be innocent or guilty? You'd be guilty. You'd be guilty? How about you? What do you think? Be, be, be honest now. He, huh? Guilty. Innocent I mean, or guilty? guilty? Yeah. Yeah, so you'd be you guilty then. If you were guilty, then where would God have to send you? Now watch. You told me earlier you were Catholic to raise away. There is no purgatory, by the way. That's a lie the church holds you. So you're either going to be going to heaven or you're going to be going to hell. So where would God have to send you? Heaven or hell? Grace that you would, as a lawbreaker, you broke the law. Where would he have to send you? Hell. And hell, and right? And think about that. How about you? Where do you think you'd be going? And unless you ask for his forgiveness, though, and then... Okay, I hear that that's a lot. People I, say, I'll just ask for forgiveness. No, I'm not saying, like, oh, just ask, but, like, if you truly... If you, yeah, but yeah, how many people... Yeah, but, but they have it, then it's too late, then, right? You right. Remember, you're dead right now, so obviously you haven't. Right. Right? It's all over. Same with you in this case, if it's all over. What are you going to do, then? I mean, is it concern you at all that it's a possibility, based on your own lifestyle, what you told me, you could be going to hell? I hope it, was, it concerns us. That's why we're out here. You may think I'm a crazy old man, but I care for you people. I don't even know you. I may never see you again. But if I don't warn you of the danger of going to hell, I'd be a very selfish person, knowing what I know. See, because I broke all the laws. I'm no different than you are. See, everybody has it. Not one of us is good. The Bible says, no, not one is good, not one. So then what are you going to do? You're going to fix it. Well, the problem is you don't have the power. See, the Bible said man loves his sin. They're dead in their trespasses, dead in their sin, which means a dead man, what can a dead man do? Nothing. They can't open their eyes. They can't do anything. See, God's got to have to open your eyes. So maybe tonight you're going to hear something you hadn't heard before or hear it a little differently. In the Bible, it's very clear, you probably know, John 3, 16 says that God so loved the world, He sent His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. He died on a cross. He paid the fine for the crimes that I committed and now you've admitted to committing. But what do we have to do to make that happen? To, to make that transition happen? See, because if you just stop with saying, well, Jesus died on the cross, then you're going to say, well, everybody's going to heaven. And that's not true. But the Bible is very clear. He says, no liar, no thief, no fornicator, no adulterer, no homosexual can enter the kingdom of heaven. He's very clear about that. So there's two things you need to do. You know what they are? Do you ever hear of the, the transaction that has to take place? Repent. Oh, very good. It's repent. And what does repent mean then? Turn away. It has to do with godly sorrow. It's actually in the Bible. It's in 2 Corinthians 7, 10. It says godly sorrow produces the repentance that leads to salvation. Pretty cool. Godly sorrow, sorrow towards the holy God, produces the repentance that leads to salvation. That's what we're talking about, being saved. 
In order to be saved, uh -huh. not that he just died on the cross, that paid the fine, but now our responsibility is, like you said, we need to repent, which means also what? Really? Turn away from. Wow. I no Keep longer do what I used to do. See, and most people do a 360. Yeah. Am I right? So then where's the repentance? They heard the word, they get the buzzwords, they try to use them, it doesn't make any sense. So it's repent, and then one more thing, it's called trust. See, you trust what he did, just like you would trust a parachute. If you were at 25,000 feet, that plane was going down, and someone said, hey, there's a parachute. You wouldn't just believe in the parachute, would you? A lot of people are told, just believe in Jesus and you'll be saved. No. The parachute, you'd pick it up and put it on. Because you know that parachute is going to save you from sure death. Well, that's the same thing. We put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. He's the only way. He says, I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. And that's the problem with all your religions. Especially when you talk about the biggest major one. They got Mary. And they got the priests. And they got all this other stuff that's going to save them. Wrong. They, 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 they spread it. Excuse me? No, that's come from the heart. Has it come from where? Your guilt. Your conscience yeah, is going to tell you no, you're guilty. Be your true, like, belief. Well, of course it's going to be. Well, why would you do it any other reason? Yeah. Right? But people do that thinking they can get away with it. And God knows right. our hearts. Yeah. So the two things you got to do are what then? Repent and trust. Yeah. Now, you didn't qualify as a good person for the glory, correct? Yeah. Right. No one who does all that was good. We agreed to that. All right. So if the Bible is very clear. It says, by grace you've been saved. It's a gift from God, not of works, so that no man can boast. Get it? And that's why you get the glow sticks. You're entitled to it, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. Does that make sense to you, hopefully? Now, hope here's a little pamphlet. I'd like you to read it to get a further understanding. Here you go. I think I get this from Nah, I have your own. I want you to read it by yourself. Let God open your eyes to what He truly means to be born again. Because without that, you're bound for hell. And we don't want that. God bless you, ladies. Thanks for listening.